Ai, não! Ah, 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 <laughs> yeah, we we completely destroyed the Sam's Sam's life there. All right, so we're live. <laughs> Can I like hide a fucking thing? <laughs> no. Can I please please just you can't hide that. a fucking thing. No, but I can pin it, and that's terrible. <laughs> don't you dare! No, it's fine. I'll delete it. It's fine. You don't want it. Though, no, no, so. no, no. It's... There we go. Oh, thank God. It's gone. You oh. don't have to see it anymore, unless I've rubbed my eyes <laughs> as it went <laughs> away. <laughs> Yes, oh, that's that right. Oh, fuck. You know that one. I, I like that one. Because that's, like <laughs> uh, that's like an earthbound do, enemy. Do you, do you guys want to hear the, the actual canon of, of Thomas the Tank? No. Colin, I told you we're on stream. Do this later. No, no stream deserves to hear this. No, Harlan, stop. Oh, should I mute myself then, if that's the case? No, you need to hold on for now, because I need to get okay, your sound okay. test done. So. Ba, ba, ba. Yes, so. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Dawn Seekers D and D. We've had very interesting questions and conversations, ones that have ruined Sam's life. So, <laughs> hello and welcome back. You may have noticed we have one new edition, and we'll be getting to uh, that new edition shortly. So, quick roll call. Suds. Denied. Harlan. Hello. Sam. Hello. Simon. Hello. Inferno. Over. And finally, Will. Hello. Okay. Now, you may see that he is a new player. Now, his character isn't technically in this yet. His character will be joining when it becomes relevant. So, he'll be sat in Discord, muted, laughing along, and probably hating us because it's With slow. just how it goes. Yeah. So, uh, I will be hearing back shortly. <laughs> Uh, from my sound guy, whether Will is okay, if he needs to be turned up, if he needs to be turned down, how things are going. Let us find out. I imagine from what my sound thing said that he needs to be turned up a little bit. Um, but they all sound good, though Infernal sounded quieter, though I think that might have just been the way he spoke. Okay. Will's good? Oh, okay. Will's fine then. Awesome. Okay. A no sound test required. All right, so... Well, you're welcome to mute yourself and stick around for when you eventually come up. If you come up this All session, right. which hopefully you will. See you on the f flip side. Yes, and I'll actually, I'll add you to the list of, um, the list of player characters over here. You get to be here. <gasps> Gacked. Gacked. Yep. Indeed. Gacked. Gacked. So, Gacked. Uh, a few, thi few things to say. Thank you to Zenosa for the work she's put in again. As always, she's, I have got new tiles ready to be used. Some of you may recognize some of these. Some of you may not. Look forward to them being present in future, cam in future campaigns. Art has been redone on some of these old bad boys, getting them ready and prepared, along with the player characters, which you may also notice on the side there. So they have been shaded, they have been redone, and everything has been brought back up if it was an old tile that I used to use. Uh, also, thank you to Tabletop Audio for the free service you provide, allowing me to just play music, including the Drunken Sailor. And when Crabbot broke the other day on Thursday, I just dropped Drunken Sailor Crabbot straight into a chat, and I don't know what happened, but I think a few heads exploded. So... I hate you for that. He got <laughs> muted instantly. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. All three of us has muted it. <laughs> Infernal just got a hot key for that mute crab bot. So uh, well, yeah, I have, I have a macro. Yeah. So uh, so thank you to Tabletop Audio for the service you provide on that front. Uh, also thank you to Dungeon Painter Studio allowing me to make some maps in preparation for not necessarily just for today, but all future events and uh, if the party ever goes on journeys and what they may eventually discover and so on. Uh, just for that side of things. And I believe that is everything. Oh, and one thing that I was going to say, there is a mod that Infernal found, which we are now using uh, some of the things for. Uh, it's a free mod. I'm only going to be saying this on once. I said it on my Thursday. I'm saying it on my Sunday. Uh, I got, I'm taking some tools from there. They said I can. They said it's free use. Go ahead and check it out. If you don't know where to start, you don't know where to set up, and you want to run it on tabletop uh, simulator rather than Roll20 because nostalgia of rolling dice, then that is a good mod to use. I unfortunately won't have the link for that, because Infernal's the one who found it. He he might be able to send it to me, and I may be able to put it in, but I'll do with that later. 
otherwise um there are some good mods out there which set you up which is good and this is one of them it's a fancy new tool which uh some of you might like to see it'll uh it's something i can use to uh organize what the aoe's of certain things are oh, what's it called or the mod yeah uh, inferno uh -huh. It is called Jugo's uh, Tabletop D&D uh, &D Collection. There you go. So look for that. This I've recolored this so that it works a little bit more compatibly with our tiles that we have here. But that'll help me with AoEs, and it'll mean that I can angle according to what people want. So, without further ado, let us begin. Last session, our party of adventurers, Sasha, Queglod, Elzion, Behold, and Malcolm, spent their day having fun around town and asking questions of the higher-ups while out and about. With most of the party competing in fun games and spending some quality time together, they rest up and proceed with their next day, hearing of the higher of the higher up within the Church of Light arriving in town to give a speech on the following day of the Harvesters Festival, a time when the religious individuals hold times of prayer and comfort for those who have passed on the year gone by. With this time on their hands, and the going about of watching the arrival of the individual later in the day, the party now sits at the breakfast table, where Queglod brings up an interesting point to challenge Chronicle. So, you're all sat in the underground, uh, you're all sat in the phoenix at your table, you, you've you got your eggs and bakey, and um, you've got your drinks, you're all prepared, it's uh, generally just a nice day. Um, and it seems to be very relatively busy in the underground um, still, with a lot of people uh, gathering up their things and so on, preparing for another day of going about the city. Um, no one seems to mind you're, you're there, no one seems to care all that much, and you're all sat there, Chronicle is with you, he doesn't seem to pick, be particularly phased by it either. So, what would you like to do? <coughs> So, how did everyone sleep? Mm. I had a lot of sleep. Mm. Yeah. Like well. a big dwarven baby. Oh, that's not... that's disturbing. <laughs> you were a child once. <laughs> and I will be again. What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was, the most, it was the most disturbing thing I could think of. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I already derailed perfect fucking perfection. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Uh... <laughs> that one just sort of slipped out, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, with that disturbing thought aside, um, I don't know how I feel about that. All the same, yes, I slept well, Quiglod, thank you for asking. Um, today, I believe, is the day that um, the individual from the Church of Light should be arriving, from what, um, from what Algair said. <coughs> Yes, we'll need to uh, lay low for today, I think. I'd like to gather some more information about them, but we can't risk getting recognised. Not that um, not that laying low is anything difficult for you, a quick A Chronicle? Eh, yeah, true. Mm. Unfortunately, I can't spread my magic so easily, but I might be able to make it so we can't be spotted so easily. It is a little bit harder to see us. Some of your individuals might be more accustomed to pass without a trace. I can have that up for the day if you need it. Oh yeah, forget about that spell. Hmm, could be helpful. But um, yeah. Speaking of you, speaking of your um stealth abilities, it does raise one question: Why? You've been um, staying away from us for a long time. Indeed. As, as you tend to do. Uh, 
Um, but yes, but you've, uh... But you're... you're here now. Yes. I... I spend most of my time doing a little bit of research. Seeing what I can gather from... Uh, about a certain situation, keeping lying low myself, seeing if I can find out any information on what I'm looking for. And um, I found a small portion of it, but once I saw you in trouble, I thought I'd intervene. My studies led to the academy also, and I met you there. From there, I decided, well... Wouldn't hurt to be at a festival together. Well, it's nice to have you about. We don't get to see you very often. Mm. True. Hmm. Um, I've actually been meaning to ask, um, you, you were the one responsible for sort of locking away our memories and such, right? Uh, yes, I did. Why? You see, as he sits there, he slumps down a little bit and he contemplates a bit thinking over, a little bit, almost struggling to get to grips with it. Well, an incident took place about five months ago or so. The incident in question got some of us in grave danger. I needed to... I needed to erase some memories to remove some influences. His eyes glance over at you, Elzian. What influences? Namely, your your mother's. My edge mother. Of course it is. When, when we were on the road, something happened to you. You, we were traveling along, it was like any other day, it was a nice sunny day out. We were in the back of the cart, traveling through, the two horses were fine, and... Well, Quaglod was leading the charge, reining in the horses as best she could. And you just went into a series of violent fits in the back of the cart. Myself, Sasha, and Behold held you down to keep you still and keep you out of harm's way. As we did, we started coughing up black smoke. Black smoke, okay. This, it rose and it lingered before settling about 20 feet from the cart. A female elven figure, we didn't recognize her at the time, but she was your mother. With you almost out cold after the experience, we knew nothing else. I walked up and spoke to her. That was the first mistake. She said she was your mother, and said that she meant no harm. She greeted each of us, spoke to us. Not sure when, but we all got influenced. Only after her head exploded, by your quick thinking, did we get out of that scrap. Your head exploded. You caused it. I'm fairly certain. From what now was this... said afterwards, you and myself could sense something. Something different about the party. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but I've decided to call it a seed for now. And this seed, she seemingly placed one inside of you a long time ago. You did something, something occurred, and it manifested. Surrounded itself around some of your memories, and it materialized. 
became a full form, an apparition, if you will. And she attacked us. She planted more seeds within us, within us, one in each of us. Obviously, with the exception of you, Malcolm, you weren't there. As a result of this, I did a little bit of research. We didn't know what would happen, and we didn't want this to happen out of the blue, where only you would be there to face four of your mothers. With that in mind, I proceeded to take action. I went to seek some favoured friends. I went to see Governor Voltari, someone you remember. Uh, yes. With what I was trying to do, I tried to wipe some simple memories, ones which I believed it was attached to. But the seed is constantly making roots, embedding itself within one's memory, accessing every corner of it. Only through drawing it out could I remove it. I spoke to Governor Voltari, and he sent a message ahead of us to Rogan Blacktooth, the High Chancellor of Madamanthia gesturing around him and we well we all agreed that we, we would get involved Rogan having previous understandings of this in the past and having a small amount of understanding of psionics being fairly well educated he suggested something outrageous I questioned him on it for a while, and as we came to a conclusion, he recommended that we kill him. What? We what burned down you... his home with him along with it. But why? Algier was partially opposed to this idea, <laughs> as you may understand. Only partially? But he said it might be one of the only ways within a certain time we didn't know how long we had. If we burn down the house, we would be able to attach a memory of guilt, make a memory of guilt, a memory of misunderstanding and grief. In doing so, we would draw out the seed. With mine, Algers, and your assistance in this, we wiped your memories of this. We uprooted the seed from your minds. Oh my god, we did kill the governor. In order to well. keep you lot safe from the High Templar, we framed it on a local spy. One which Elga had been meaning to deal with. One that had been neglected a few times. Would As a result be... of that, we went about our business and we led you to believe that everything was okay. Wait, 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 wait. Then, if that's the case, then who did we chase into in uh, into uh, Oaksmith? The spy. But he was a pyromancer. And a Indeed. skeleton to boot. I think a bit too. I think that might have just been luck. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what happened with him, but all the same. Things got out of hand. You defeated the first Fire Elemental. I had originally thought you might try and run away from it, but I was obviously misguided on that front. You fought it, and then you were taken away. And everything slowly fell into place. Your memories were gone, the seed was removed, and you would live your journeys not knowing. Hmm. And we agreed to this plan at the time. Indeed. Very well. K killing a man. An innocent. By the way, Malcolm, I'm just gonna, like, leave. Just gonna get up and leave. Okay. Matt Malcolm? Matt Malcolm, where are you? Matt Malcolm? Matt Malcolm. Where? Matt Malcolm, I had nothing to do with this situation. I, I suppose, but... Probably feels like he doesn't... 
need to be here. Yeah, alternatively, because anyway. we killed his governor, we might want to just get some answers. Desperate times called for desperate measures. Upon explaining it, Rogan was entirely for this idea. He explained that if these seeds did truly exist and one managed to escape from us, we don't know how far her reign could go. If she could mind control individuals of her own will and only a certain few could object to that. Imagine how much damage she could do. Hmm. Rather not. And that is the reason why Rogan gave up his life for it. Hmm. It is an unfortunate circumstance, but it was what happened. It is in the past now, something we cannot change. Wait, um, you, you didn't erase your own memories. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. I can't. Couldn't the other two have erased your memories? Unfortunately not. The catch of being who I am means that I cannot forget. Hmm. <clears throat> so... You've still got a seed inside you. Indeed. But I have measures in place. Elvian. Those be. Yes, Sasha. No, no. Quaglod, right, what are those measures? Yeah, what, are, what are the measures, Chronicle? He goes silent, and he ponders for a moment. He looks well, that down bodes well, hands. doesn't it? He looks down at his hands and looks back up and says, You don't need to worry about it, it's fine. Elzin, do you feel capable of dealing with a, a shade of your mother? Anything to do with my mother, I'm more than happy to deal with. Right. Few beings that can actually get me truly angry at that woman. I mean, that and Mistweed. Okay, that too. But. <laughs> <laughs> she gets me irrationally angry. There's a reason to hate Mistweed. That's an answer. Anyway, not important. Indeed. Anyway, not sorry to get us off to such a sad start, but. No, don't worry. It was important that we knew. Indeed. But just know that you're all safe now. And regardless right. of what happens, I'll be fine. Such a relative it's... time to safe. Uh, is, is there any possibility that Rogan faked his death? That he's still alive? I, I honestly don't know. I'm not sure what he was capable of. He has grown a lot since I last saw him. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if his body, if the body was found, or if, or if there was anything that took place. I don't know. Well, no matter what, I suppose I. We've got a death to make up for. Quite. Uh, anyhow. So, the, what was it, the Church of Light, or the... Yes. The individual from that, also known as the Father of Dawn, the second in charge of the entirety of the Church of Light. The first being... The Mother of Dawn. She right. lives far from here. No one knows where exactly, but not here in the Empire, that's for sure. Interesting. Well, as long as she's content to remain away from us, that is helpful. All the same. 
I noticed this was hard on Malcolm. He obviously doesn't agree with what took place, having to make sacrifices like that. We'll uh, speak with him. I'll be honest, I'm not sure I'm not even sure how you convinced me in the first place. Well when the Just promise of not knowing it took place was there, it can be a very convincing argument at first. But I felt it was right for you to know. This sort of thing. I didn't want to hide it from you. But mm. nor did I want to tell you. I'd wait for it to come up. Well, I suppose it doesn't really matter now. It's gone and passed. What what do we do about this this father of dawn? I think that's what you said. I'm, my brain is mush. No, it is. Depends on what you want to do. If you simply want to hide, then you're welcome to do so. The underground is probably the safest place. But all the it same, like it might be worth hearing what he has to say. I was thinking that. We'd, it'd be, I feel like we'd be losing out on valuable information mm. if we were to just ignore him. Mm. <clears throat> the church, Yes, the Church of Light is an obstacle, but they are not our enemies. I, well... I prefer to avoid fighting them if possible. Having them on side might be a good idea. But they are not allies, and they don't hold with us. They... They attacked... I, I want to say they attacked Malcolm in Infernal? Uh, no. They were going to attack Malcolm. Alright. We believe they were going to attack Malcolm. That's... Not... That's not something we can ignore. If they've got something held against us, then we need to be wary at the very least. Well, this oh, raises this raises other issues as well. If they were going to attack Malcolm, they must know something about us. Hmm. If they have information on us, staying away from them is going to be difficult. Hmm. We can't. We might. We probably can't take this person on head on. Elysium, do you think we could talk to Algier alone? Your your you're good friends with him. Do you think that would be we'd be able to do that? I've got a way to communicate with Algier. Could do it now, but we need somewhere quiet. Uh, that'll work. Um, it might be better to get to get Malcolm in on this. If you're going to yes. act and you want to get this, you might want to inform him. That way, nothing bad will happen and come from it. Yes, I I think we should do that. Indeed. Let's uh, let's see where he is then. He can't have gone too far. Mm. Right. He wasn't subtle about it. A large majority of you would have no, seen he's no. probably gone to his room. Mm -hmm. uh, I I think I'll take this one first, if you don't mind. And saying so, that uh, Sasha is going to. Uh, stand up, and they are gonna head uh, up to where Malcolm headed off to. To Malcolm's room. His room. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. You want, you want to be alone? Hmm? For the start, um, we've been hanging out recently, and I feel like starting off slowly with it is probably better than all of us showing up at once. That might uh, be sensible. Maybe just wait... 10 minutes before heading up. You're actually having some tact. I know, I'm just as surprised as you are. Must be, must be all this politicking we've been doing. Mm. Well, not a poor idea then. In the meantime, Elzion, would you care for a rematch? Dragon chess? Sure. Of course. A quick game. <laughs> All right then. So, Elzion and Quaglod <clears throat> have your game of dragon chess. So, I believe you're not proficient in dragon chess, so it's an intelligence check with disadvantage for you, but a regular for you, uh, Elzion. So, Mardi yeah. Same. Just regular check. 
regular intelligence check with the proficiency of your dragon chest, so it should be like plus seven, I think. I believe so. I don't think it truly yeah. matters, though, does it? No, 27 is, or 24 is pretty good. No. Yeah, see dragon's chest, yes, I get a plus seven to my results. Yes. So with with a, uh, a very unique opener, with a little bit of time playing Farnsworth and Farnsworth occasionally beating you, You've figured out a better way to start out an opener, one that isn't as exposed as the previous one. You begin to move your pieces forward and begin to set yourself up, and you set up a nice defense, and when Quigglelord wasn't expecting it, you make one quick strike, taking one of his more powerful pieces at a sacrifice of a smaller one. Roll again. Oof. Yeah, still a 15 on your, bike, your end. Blood? That is a ten. Ten. Okay. With a few other good and successful moves, you take a few more pieces one at a time. Um, you're making slow advances. Nothing major, but slow advances that are successfully going through one at a time. Taking pieces and leaving Quaglod with very little to work with. Again? As you begin to wrap up the game, you corner Quaglod with uh, one or two pieces. Uh, Quaglod's being pushed back. Quite a lot of the main pieces have been taken, but the game's not quite over yet. One more roll. Oh. It's probably over, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with a swift finisher, the cornered Quaglod is nice and easy to beat. Defeating her in a very tacti tactical way. And you feel accomplished. You've been working on this and it's helped you out a lot. Yes. Excellent. I am chess. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that game takes the better part of 15 minutes. During which, Sasha? Uh, I'm going to firstly just knock on Malcolm's door. Uh, Ma Malcolm? Uh, would, would you like to talk about, well, what we just learned? There's not much to talk about. <sighs> I think there is. Um, I can think of a number of reasons for wanting to leave, but uh, which one was it? Mm. I'm gonna go up and open the door. Okay. You open the door. <coughs> Opens There's up. a little dwarf there. Just... Yep. Hello! The reason I left was because I was told... I was sent on a mission to... To stop the one that killed the governor. And it turns out that you guys were the ones that were responsible for it. I suppose. Look, I, I can't imagine what could have convinced me to go along with such a plan. Honestly, I'm a little bit horrified myself. But the pro one of the people who sent you on this on this road was Algair, I think, mm, right? No. I thought he was like sort of really involved with Rohal and Baroness and all that. Yeah, oh. he is. But he wasn't actually. He wasn't one of the people that told me to. Yeah, he oh, wasn't he the don't. one who told. He wasn't the one who told you. But he has influence. Algar was the what gave the okay to this for some reason, and I, I, I know I don't think anything happens in this city without Rohal or or the Baroness having at least a passing knowledge of it. I, I honestly don't know don't know how to help with this, but. I, 
Wait, who 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 left by the way? Um well DC then came back. Okay. okay. And now Sadz is gone. And, and he's back. Died. Okay. okay. Can you can you hear us? Yeah. Right. What look. We're still the same people we were before. We just learn something horrifying about our past. I don't know what was what was was going through our heads. I don't know what memories we had. I don't know. I have. I don't know. I just don't know. But something managed to convince us to do that. And you you know us. We wouldn't do it if there was any other option. It still doesn't change the fact of the orders that I was given. True, I thought that I thought... Uh, true, I thought that when we took down the skeleton that it was over, but I was wrong. How about, first things first, we go and talk to Algier. Then, after that's done, we go talk to Rohal and we find out what we're supposed to do with this mess. And what exactly does, do we have to talk to Algier about? Well, you know this uh, Father of Light, you know, Father of Dawn from the Church of Light. We, well, as you know, they were a bit, the Church of Light is a bit shady and we're trying to get Algier's take and support on it and well, also, we kind of want to talk about what just, you know, what we just learned, seeing as he was a part of it. Maybe he can offer some insight as to what was going through our heads. Honestly, I'm still bitter at myself and all a, a little bit of Chronicle, honestly. <sighs> Yeah, doesn't matter. But just let's find out what information we can first before having to question your your well everything. You're not the only one that's a bit uh, shell shocked by all this. On the plus side, uh, Quaglod and uh, and Elzion are having a game of dragon chess downstairs, and I'm betting one of them is getting slaughtered. <laughs> God, I wish it was Elzion. Well, uh, I reckon we'll be heading off uh, quite soon, so well, if you want to come with us, then well, be re be ready in say twenty the next twenty minutes. I'll um the others might be up to see to offer their own take on the situation, but uh, if you don't want that, I can tell them to stay off. As it stands, uh, I'll uh, see you in a bit, and Sasha, just starts walking away. Malcolm nods and I'll go with and I'll go with you. Oh, oh okay that works. <clears throat> he had to mute his mic so he just said I'll ah, go okay. with you. Fair. Good. And uh we, we come back after that uh that conversation and I'm assuming the game of Dragon Chess is still going unless they were blindingly fast. Uh, it's just wrapping up. No, oh, you come on, Quaglod, you can do it. No, she can't. And he places bam, bam, the final bam. piece down, placing it in. Calling the game, and that's it. Ah. Better luck next time, Quaglod. Anyway. Yes, so, do you want to contact Algier? Right then. 
Yes. But like I said, we need some more quiet. Don't want this to be known by everybody. Okay. Where would you like to go that's quiet? We're in the tavern now, aren't we? You're in the Undercity. In the oven. Okay, so... Mm, one of our rooms, perhaps? Mm, go to the room where I've been staying. I think. Yeah, you've been on your own, I believe. Yep, we'll go to my... Where I've been staying. Okay. What's that on me? So, you all move along the... You'll move along the corridors, heading in. And you get into... Uh, Elgin's room. Just kind of the way he left it. A few things have been moved around. Looks like uh, the, the two beds have been pulled together to form one big bed. Need my big bed. I should not sleep on any small beds. Right then. I am going to... Once we're all in, I'm going to pull out the crystal thing that helps me communicate with Algar. I can't... It's pretty something that I haven't put into my... Wow, I need to work on my inventory management better. But whoops, that is not an ego whip. But uh, yes, I pull out my communication crystal thing. Okay. My fantasy mobile phone. Do you remember how to activate it? I remember very little of even what <laughs> I've had to eat today, Chris. <laughs> now tell us a communication crystal. Do not does, can does, I do a history does. check to find out? Go ahead. See if you can remember. One, one, I, one, I get a bonus one, one, my one, law book. one, one. Oh. Okay, well this wouldn't be in your law book. Well, that the type of device might be. Yeah, no, this is more modern stuff than what would be in I'll your still law get a book. plus seven. Yeah, plus seven. You remember all you have to do is you just have to give it a quick shake and then talk into it. <laughs> What are you doing with that crystal? Sasha, shut up. For once in your damned life. Alright. I can't quite remember whether this is two-way communication or just one way. Fuck it! You'll soon find out. I'll soon find out. Hello, Algear, are you there? There's a pause. And then there's a reply of... Yes, I'm here. Good, because we've got something we need to discuss. Alright. Uh, Private or public? Private. Would you like me to meet you at the fortress? Or rather, where are you right now? Currently in the Undercity, in my room. Uh, head, Dawn Seekers. head to the uh, war room. I'll meet you there. Very well. And it's just to be us, okay? I can get I can get us a quiet spot, it's fine. Very well. And I do whatever I need to do de to deactivate it again. Oh, it just deactivates after five seconds of not talking. Oh, okay. Right, okay. So Next. right then. Let's go to the war room and wait. These things aren't really great for uh Long communications. Alright, so. You will make your way to the war room, heading back through the main courtyard, travelling past a few of the tents. You see quite a lot of people um, preparing and that sort of thing. You see two more... As you leave the room, you see two individuals being dragged in chains, um, both with uh, sacks over their heads, uh, being dragged along the floor, uh, and then taking a right turn down from the un from the under tavern. Uh taking a right turn down towards the prisons, which you've previously seen. Uh, behold, you've walked past them and you've seen the kinds of states that it is down there. Yes. Um, Al Algar, remind me, can, if we talk to you, can people still hear us talking to you, or...? How are you talking to him? You, you, he, he, we can't talk to him right now. Oh, can't I? Wait, wait. Because I thought he was with... Sasha like leans over and begins talking in the blue gem that you're holding, and it's just like, and you just look no, no, at no, Sasha. not Algar Chronicle, sorry. Oh, Chronicle, right. 
So what was your question again? Uh, Chronicle, uh, remind me, when we're walking places, can if we talk to you, do people just ignore what we say, or do they think we're just crazy people? Unless they know you, they generally ignore what you say. So, for example, case, when Malcolm um, saw, you, saw you talking to Thin Air previously, that was because he knows you relatively well. Right. In that case, since there's no one really around, um, as we're I'm, as we're walking there, I mean, um, so with the uh, seeds that you mentioned before, yes. Can you theorize how they'd interact if there was, say, another thing possessing someone? I haven't looked into that, but I'm sure there would be some manner of interaction between them. Mm. If they attach to memories. So anything that generally has access to your memories can interact with it also. Maybe like a pact with a demon or something similar where... Or possession might also be a similar um, mm. factor to that. But mm, I wouldn't say... How, I can't say how it would react exactly. Right. Something to think about. Maybe we could... There are lots of ways one can be possessed. And if it were possible to like block out other outside influences by already being possessed. For example, by a god's... Holy Spirit, or I don't know about you, Quag Lords. Raven Queen could do something there. I don't know. Um, she can. Unlikely, I don't think. And then, and uh, I'm going to try and subtly catch uh, uh, Elzian's eye and just sort of be like, mm hmm, mm hmm. What are you getting at, Sasha? Speak clearly for once. You know your little friend from the staff. My little friend from the yes, I am very much aware of this little friend from the staff. Just I saying. am not. Right then. It's your it's your secret to share. I'm I'm not going to. Well, you brought it up now, haven't you? You told me to bring it up. I was trying to be subtle. Never a really. dwarf, I don't do subtle very well. Frankly, it's a miracle I got this far. We know. Anyway, right. Besides, it's a chronicle. A while ago, we had, we went to a... We infiltrated what can only be described as a mob and base of operations, if you could describe it as such. I picked up a staff of the vivification, which I still have. And I just, just gesture to it on my back, just wherever I've got it kept yeah. on me. And uh, this has led me to communications with a being from another realm. I see. It wishes me to collect items known as shards, of which I have learned the location of... <laughs> Of two of them. One of them one of them is in Boston. One of them is presumed, since last I checked, to be down south at Fort Milligan. It is Fort Milligan, right, Chris? Yes. Wasn't even looking at my notes, yeah, motherfuckers. <laughs> I don't have them in front of me because I've lost them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But yes. That's information that the others don't know this being, which is me doesn't really know what it itself is. These shards are portions of it. From what I can understand, they're generally associated to powerful objects such as the one in Bostolan, which is known as the Acrian Orb. It affects, to cut a long story short, it's used as a powerful tool for mind control. I see. I have had repeated communications with this being, and there has been no malicious intent shown, though I won't lie, I'm being careful of that possibility. I see. Well, if it is just a carrier spirit, then they may offer some aid to you. Mm. 
However, they also may be cunning. Obviously, you said you're watching yourself, so that is something to keep in mind. I know a thing or two about being manipulated. But if anything, this almost fits you perfectly. If the shards act as mind control, then if anything, you're probably the one best defending against it. Probably, yes. Though there's been no probes into my mind to control me that I have felt. It's either incredibly subtle, or so or just so powerful that it broke down my defenses with so little, so little effort that I didn't even notice. Maybe. But, I'd say just be wary of it. And if you need it exercised, there's usually a lot of, there's a lot of individuals who can do that. I, myself included. Most clerics can as well. Sasha will be able to one day. Just takes time. Mm -hmm. And just sort of staying out of it. Yes. All the same. We're here. You arrive at the war room, and you see the there are still a lot of guards waiting outside, and um, the one of the guards uh, walks over just as you're approaching the door. Oh, we've been expecting you. You can go straight in. Right. <clears throat> I'm, I'm just gonna like move my armor so just to make sure it's in the right place. Like, don't want to look messy for Algir. Ah, hello there, Algir. Hello. Yes, as you go in the room, you can see that there are a number of guards on the inside, about twelve or so. A lot heavier guarded than than usual. But you are these see... the same sort of guards that he has with him? No, these aren't. These are the uh, Undercity guards. You do see, however, you uh, you see Rohal standing by the war table, currently talking to Algair. You also see Tiark as well, and you see Algair standing there, not in his usual uniform. You see the usual armor that he wears, the uh, the fine robe with the uh, ornamental plate armor has been stripped away. You can see he wears what looks to be a more a darker blue robe. The gold and red scrolling that was on it before of the uh, of the wording and uh, the speech about the cabal it's not there. It's almost simple. And you see wrapped around his neck a very simple uh, black scarf with gold scrawling around the outside of it. Uh, or a golden trim, rather. You can see his hair is almost pulled back and you see the guards that would usually be with him are all cloaked in kind of a black cloak and hood, keeping themselves hidden. Their weapons held uh, within the cloak itself. You can just about see the end of the halberd poking down from where they hold it. We need to speak privately, Algir, and I mean privately. Don't well. worry, it can be done. Rohal, if you'll excuse us. Go about your business. You can use that. You can use one of the rooms, you know how to access them. He gives a nod and he heads over. Now, is this serious enough that you need to worry about my guards as well? I believe it may be, but I have a sneaking suspicion that you already know what this is about. I, so I have my suspicions, which is why I agreed to this. You head over to one of the walls and you watch as he holds out uh, one of the waystones, like the one you have. Except the one he has is encased within a glass box. It looks like it's suspended in the center. And it has a gold symbol on the front of it, and as he holds it out, he places it against the wall, and you watch as a door appears. One that you none of you were able to previously see, and he begins walking through it. Hmm. You will follow? Yeah, we all follow. Yeah. I follow. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Of course. You all follow through, and you head through the illusory doorway, and as you enter to the other side, you can see a very simple black wall room 
with what looks to be a series of sofas uh, in what looks to be complete shock white. There's about six of them in all in a circle around a central fire in the middle. The fire burns, but no smoke is made from it. And very little heat as well. He goes over and he sits down on one of the sofas. Please do take a seat. So, what is it you wish to speak about? In this room, no one can access it. It is extra dimensional. Anybody trying to hear from the outside will be unable to, and anybody using divination magic will be blocked. You do not need to worry. Uh, th there are... Death. Yeah. And I will handle it. So you've learned about that, then? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> I was disagreeing with it at first. And to just say I didn't like the idea of Rogan dying. I don't think any of us have truly liked the idea of Rogan dying. But I... he had a point. Even I, with my level of expertise in psionic powers, it has its limits. That may have been one of the few challenges that I could not overcome. I don't think I could take on your mother in a one-on-one -on -one fight. That needs to change. Someone's got to be able to. I think that's... We need to take her down as quickly, quickly as possible. True, but you might be the only one who can. A magic is invulnerable to outside forces. But seemingly, from what I heard, you destroyed one of her so-called seeds. Yes, yes I did. Which is why I believe you are one of the few things that can destroy them. That is why we had to take extreme measures. If you died or were taken out, this world is hers. <clears throat> I... It's not just a question of power, then. No. In terms of power, she has the political alignment to be able to completely disrupt everything in the Elven Kingdom. She has the back of two families, and those families are sneaky, stealthy, and dangerous. And she is slowly but surely weeding out the heads of others, putting them in place. You are now the aligned heir to the throne. Once the once the official elven prince dies and the elven king is killed, you are the next in line. Unless you are taken out of the equation as well. In which case it falls to the next in line. And as you are no longer the only son, things have changed. You have a sister. Yes. She is next in line if you do not return home. And if you return there, home, you die. Has there been any luck in locating her? Unfortunately not. Only rumours that she exists and that she travels around with your mother at all times. <clears throat> that makes it very difficult to pinpoint her. <sighs> that fucking bitch. Mm -hmm. I I'll be entirely honest here. I, We know little of what exactly is going on with Elsian's mother? You probably know just as much as I do, then. She's attempting to rule the Elven Kingdoms. And with it, the Empire. The Empire is second in hand. The ones who are allied the most to the Elven Kingdoms, an alliance forged long ago. Hmm. However, if she disrupts that, she disrupts the Empire. Indeed. And considering the fact that we are not at the most peaceful with outside forces, Indeed. having that schism could end poorly for us. Indeed. The Emperor is currently under extreme supervision. 
there are individuals in place that are built to counter these sorts of things, but if she herself went there, I don't know what would happen. No. Her power is psionic, just as just as elegant and your own is, yes? Yes. But your power can't affect her or my can't, power can't easily affect her. As strong as it is it is potentially stronger than hers, but hers is natural. She earned it through supernatural means. She wasn't born with it, like Elzion was. A one-on-one -on -fi one -on -one fight against Elzion once he reaches a particular skill, once he gets to a level in which he is challenging, he may be also able to beat me. He was born naturally with the power. I don't know how or why. These sorts of things are impossible. But... Hmm. So your power, despite being potentially stronger, can't counter hers. No. But Elzian's Can. Can. Interesting. This is psionic alone. A general fist fight could also work. You could beat her up and cut her head off, and that would be fine also. But when you're surrounded by a by an entire region of elves who would bow down to your every whim, when you can be stealthy and unseen by magic at every corner, when you have the power to destroy one's mind with a simple stare, that is very dangerous. the main reason that I can't defeat her. It also makes it very difficult to move against her in any way. Exactly. We cannot get involved in the affairs of the Elven Kingdom. They must do that themselves. The Elven King himself is going to be visiting the Emperor within the near future. They are going to be guarded heavily, both sides. I will be joining the Emperor's side, and as an ambassador to the Elves themselves, I will be returning home to aid in that. But... <clears throat> it is a time when we need to be careful. And with that in mind, the seeds that were placed inside your minds were hers. Powerful enough. Powerful enough from her apparition that I could not counter them or destroy them. They fled every attempt I made to destroy them. Same with your friend Chronicle here. However, he devised a plan. Through his research, the seed follows that of emotional memories, sapping the power from them and using it to grow. Rogan, being the research type, offered himself as a sacrifice to destroy it, seeing a lot further than any of us did. He mentioned a point that turned the tide of the agreement with all of you. It was. This may go beyond our plane of existence. If she becomes a god, everything changes. The techniques have been lost to many, many years. Back when... The Raven Queen was the last to ascend. But her mother, with full access to the world and the material plane, would be able to siphon the entirety of the knowledge of this realm and funnel it into her own being. And in doing so, would, be, would either become a god or have the capability of becoming a god. Exactly. And that is what changed it. Because the Raven Queen, and whatever deity you follow, Sasha, that <clears throat> they would be quiet on that front. in the firing line. They would be in danger as well. Well, that is what changed your minds. Nothing could. <sighs> We can't let we can't let that happen. Even if I doubt the capability of 
of a new of a new god against a legion of others. I we we can't the sheer chaos that would reign from that would be <clears throat> hellish. Just just okay. Sasha, just imagine me in charge of the world. No, oh, sweet Jesus God, no. Then imagine that ten times worse. No oh, God. You're getting the vague sense of what my mother would be like. Yes, um anyway. That, that wasn't the only re um Algar. Does Rohal know of this? Does Indeed. I explained this to Rohal and the Baroness. I had them play along with this. It was essential that neither party knew about this until it came up, but apparently Chronicle can't keep his end of the bargain. Let's be honest here, what's the harm at this point? If your memories come back, the seed may return. Loud. We did it was begin to destroyed. regain some memories. But we can't risk it. All the same. With how it is, and with how everything is developing as in the way that it is, I believe, with how powerful you have become, Elsian, that I am less worried now of the issues of the seeds returning. You have the capability to destroy them. And you have become pow powerful enough to do so. We don't know if physical attacks work against the apparitions. That is an experiment that you'll have to find out for yourselves. Hmm. Well, hopefully not. Indeed, hopefully not. But we have discovered one thing. Mm -hmm. Which is? If someone dies while affected by the seed, the seed dies with them. Every single individual that you have helped capture so far, and spire that has entered this city, has been infected. What That's happens what if they're then revived? We weren't willing to find out. 300 gold may mm -hmm. be something that I can do a menial task, but if the seed returns with it, we don't know what it'll do. Yeah, it's far too great a risk for an experiment. Exactly. Well, if the, it's um, already, if the it's seed already happened, with, hasn't it? If the seed it has. Mm, if the seed lives within their memories, on a full resurrection, I can see no reason why it wouldn't return. But if it were to die, if the creature were to die, and the thing, and the the seed itself were to die and then be brought back, then perhaps it, would, it wouldn't have the capable, it wouldn't have that easy way of coming back. What are you getting at? Well, these, these seeds, they are a part of, or a, a, a portion of, of Elysian. What's her name? I keep calling her Elysian's mother. Mad psycho bitch's power. That that's yes about right, but uh, yes. Real name is Jariel. Right. If if it is a portion of her power, if they die. Wait, what's her name? Shariel. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Right. If these portions of power die when someone is killed, that means that they are entirely, they, they aren't sustained by her. If it's, it's possible that since they are, they are, they, they can't, it's possible that since they aren't sustained by her, that they can't, if they die, they can't be remade. They can't reform. True, but if they can reform from our lost memories, well, it's part. It, what our memories aren't gone, are they? They're locked away. They're they're contained. They've 
They might have been wiped from our minds, but they're, they're still, they still exist, in a sense. <laughs> Abe, you're so worried about us getting, about having those memories return, yes? Well, I guess. But the memories were destroyed with the seed. There are certain memories which you shouldn't be able to get back. The real question is, were the memories destroyed, or were they simply locked away along with the seed? If that is the case, then eventually they may return. If that is the case, then Elzion, you should be able to sense them at this time. They'll be weak, but if you focus on someone, you'll be able to sense them. They should be there. I offer my, I offer myself as tribute. Huh. Oh, the rooting around I could do in your playing, Sasha. Oh, there's not, there's not much of one that I, I could do stuff with. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna try and sense into Sasha's brain. Uh, just, just, a, just a second. I need, I need to, I, I need to prepare myself. Ah, I, 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 I allow this. I'm not gonna try and fight this in any way. Okay. Go ahead and uh, make an intelligence check, Elsie, with advantage because you are being allowed to do this. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, ah! that's even better. Oh. <laughs> Looking that's... through Sasha's memories, you go through every one, and you f eventually come across where the memories would be. You see a series of locked memories hidden behind closed doors in a physical sense as if traveling through a dungeon as you travel around. They're hidden behind locked doors. You're unable to go through those barriers without potentially undoing them. But eventually you come across a chasm. A hole within Sasha's mind. And looking about, in the center of it is a small purple bead wrapped in chains. As you focus on it and you look, as you attempt to reach out to it, the purple bead stretches and you watch as swiftly as if up from the chasm a darkness grabs the core portion of it and breaks it. You watch as the purple glow fades, falling down, still wrapped in chains. You get the sense that the seed has been destroyed, but with the revivification that's been cast on you all. It seems that it tries to come back, but is equally destroyed each time it tries. The defenses are still in place. Searching your own mind for a similar sort of thing, you find the same thing. A hole in your own memory. And you better understand this one, because it's in your own mind. The seed that's been placed within you will attempt to grow back each time a resurrection spell is cast on an individual. So long as you do not completely and utterly fail on the saving throw when you are revived, the seed will not return. It's been much. If we die... Or... You I and get revived, and I do that, ch and I get you to make that check afterwards to see if you suffer the negative effects. If you roll a natural one, the seed comes back. Hmm. So these defenses could be destroyed if we were to, if we take too many risks. It seems Which... like it. We need to be careful. So I think. It can be resurrected. Yes, I think. For the time being. It may be an idea to stay away from the Church of Steel's fighting. Mm, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> we can't risk it. Yeah. We can't risk that it. same note, from what I know, higher level resurrection spells are more durable, and with less negative effects it might be easier to withstand such a thing. The mental right. strain of dying and coming back can be difficult, especially within a short amount of time. 
The difficulty of a longer death means that you require more resources, but the strength of the power, the strength of the spell, if higher level, will be able to potentially negate the negative effect of it coming back. It also might be possible for you to permanently destroy them. However, that might need you to have a skilled psionic individual on your team, or well, wherever we find one of those. Alzine is not powerful yet. Powerful enough yet. But eventually, maybe. Right. Okay. So, does that mean that it is potentially like the, the length of death that will allow such that will allow the seed to die? If you want to think of it that way, yes. Seeing as it is not necessarily destroyed, but rather trapped and on the precipice of death. Back, yes. Yes. Hmm. Anyway, I think this is enough talking. Uh, there is one thing we've is that, forgotten. Uh, yes, I apologize. Elgar, you are aware of... Uh, you've, t you've talked to Elvian about uh, the Dawn Marshals, yes? I have. I have, right, Elzy? I'm pretty sure. I swear, you, I swear yeah. you said you did. No, I... you. No, you did. I do remember the conversation now. It's when he refused you wine, but you played a little bit of chess. Ah, okay, yes. Because he told you you could get your own in the Undercity. Ah, yes, yeah, so that led to the whole. Yes. Yes. Yes, he has. He has told me that you have acquired an artifact of theirs. Yes, and we've been designated as Dawn Marshals. New ones? What for? Yes. That... There's, necrom there's necromancy about, there's a world-ending horror about... Uh, honestly, I'm trying to... I, there's drag the dragons have been rebelling against their own. Honestly, at this point, what, why, why didn't... I'm honestly wondering why they didn't come sooner. Hmm. There's darkness in these lands, um, huh. apparently we're supposed to rout it out. So what's Unless that we die horribly. With... What's that got to do with me? You're aware of the Church of Light? Indeed. They support the Dawn Marshals. Well, they mm. may they say they do. They support their Dawn Marshals. How do you mean? It seems if you're not one of their own, then they'd rather you weren't living. The Church of Lights, as you're aware, follow Motalin. And they believe that he is the one who empowers the Dawn Marshals to I see. serve his will. And those because... who do not do homage to him are... Hmm. I see, and because none of you follow Motarlin, it means they... that you're in a situation where they will challenge they... you if they get a chance. Yes. Yes, that means we'll have to be lying low for the next few days while they're in while they're in the city. Mm. But at the same time, we need to be aware of them. We need we need to hear what they have to say because, well, they are connected to Motalin, and no matter what the truth of where the power where the Dawn Marshal's power comes from, it still is maintained as it, Motalin was part of its creation at least. Mm. Then they would have insight into the artifacts and uh, the Dawn Marshals themselves. They may even know why we're here. I'll see what I can get without arousing suspicion. I'll get back to you on that. Um, but, if it is indeed how you say it, I would recommend that you, as you have already said, keep on the down low, but, again, don't worry too much about them. The city is guarded. And now that you have told me, I can side with you. We don't. We'll, we're not going to make any moves against them 
Don't yes. worry about that. Just don't we just, start we just want fights. them not to be in our way. Good. I will make. I will try to keep them away from you. Thank you for letting me know about this. That could have caused quite a lot of damage. Well, is that everything? Uh. I need to ask a quick question of my companions, but uh, uh, but if uh, if if they don't agree, then I think we'll be off. Um, Guardian Miadal, summoning now. Right now. Really? Hmm. I don't. Getting Algair's take on on certain things would probably be more helpful than us going it on our own. Okay. So are you calling out to Guardian Miedel, or...? That's what I'm doing! Okay. Very well. Um, I do, in fact, have... Oh, no, I don't have any time. I have, yes, I do have some dried time on me. Okay. Give me a D100 check. Oh, no! Uh, can people help me with this? No. Because of, of the nature of this room, she can't necessarily access this. Okay, I'm, I feel like I, I should probably like ment tell Algar what we're gonna do before we do it. Okay. Yeah. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. Can I? Can I? Just Algar. Oh, that's pretty good actually. There's a. Um, I know. The Dawn Marshals are allowed to summon forth a, a guardian angel uh, who has information that sometimes can be useful to us. Would you be amenable to us summoning her and allowing you to talk to her? Whether that is possible, I don't know. I mean, I, if I can speak to her, then I guess that would be interesting to say the least but i don't th she shouldn't be able to access this kind of room yes the nature of this uh, room prevents all access from outside places. i hadn't thought about that um perhaps another time then perhaps if you can think of a time that would be uh, amenable to you just contact uh contact Elysium. I will do so, but be careful where you summon her. If anybody is watching and they see, then it could mm. give a lot away. True. If they can see her, that is. That is something to work out. I was, I'm not entirely certain if you would be able to see her, but I, even in such a case, we could, of course, just relay her, yes. relay her words to you. Especially with the help of Elzian here. Thank you, Elzian. Oh, glorious leader, Elzian. <laughs> ah, just what I wanted to hear. <laughs> question, question, what would the role be? Uh, half your cleric level or lower. Oh, wow! So that's two or one. Oh! Oh! Even my usual three wouldn't cut it. No. Hmm. That's out of a hundred. Oh, gosh. That's out of a D100. <laughs> <laughs> that is literally a 50, uh, a 1 in 50 chance. Mm. However, if you go up one level, your usual effect. 3 would work. <laughs> yes, yes, I just need to level up before summoning her, and, and I'll obviously be able to do it. <laughs> apparently, all of my, my prayer rolls end up get, getting 3. Yep. So, I, I, if that happens the third not. time, I, I, I'm, I'm getting a pony. <laughs> I will remember that. So, <laughs> so, if we're done here, I have something to get back to, but you should be able to leave this room when you are ready. Right. Yes, thank you for your time. No worries. And if you are interested, I'd recommend staying back a little bit when going to check out the... the individual as he arrives within town. There might be developments that might interest you. Who knows? Either way, take care. Hint, 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 hint. What? 
Goodbye, Algar. He leaves. He heads off. You're left in a black room with white sofas. They're quite nice. It's quite soft. It's quite comfy here, honestly. Hmm. Uh, Malcolm, what's your take on all that? I don't know if he's still muted or not. With how it is, he might only be able to listen for a while. I'll get a message from him in a minute, depending on the situation. Mm-hmm. He's still muted, okay. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a moving on situation? Yes. So yes, let's move. You, mm-hmm. you move on, you leave the room. Rahal gives you a nod as you're... Uh, as you're as you're leaving. Um, you oh, pres- um, before we completely leave, just, can I take her um, her second aside? What's her name? Tal? Tal? Tia. Tal- Tia. Tia. You can try. Okay, I'm not going to take him aside. I'm just going to like, I'm going to lift up the orb and just go, he's still, just like, get interested. He doesn't seem to react. As if he's concentrating. Ah, never mind. What the try? Back in the bag goes. Okay. You make your way out, and you head out back into, uh, back into the Undercity. So, you got maybe three hours before the individual is supposed to arrive. Do you want it to do anything? Otherwise, we can move straight there. Think we um. Down. Is that thing in all the yes. Uh, if this is a decent time, I have to head off for one moment. That's fine. We can take a break and skip straight there. Uh, okie dokie. Alright, we're taking a break, and I'm gonna right. ask again. Uh, I'm going to cry in the corner. Okay, right, be back shortly then. Okay. So, we will take a quick five minute break. We'll be back in a minute. Bye bye.
<laughs> Sausage is the only good corn. Uh, I had pork. um. I had Every chicken. other thing made of pork is made of pork. Okay, of pork. Should I yeah. tell you? Because I had like um. Because I had uh, enchiladas with uh, chicken corn, and that was good. Oh man. Yeah, the chicken. The chicken corn is 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 mostly alright. It's it's still you know not as good as actual chicken, but it, it's it, much. It, the it's, the it's options closer. are much better than they used to be. Mm. Inferno, Back I trust you to clip the only good thing is sausage. I trust you to clip that for me, please. Wait, oh. <laughs> I, I put the stream on it right at the moment where it just went Inferno go, well, when uh, Hotland said, the only good thing is sausage. <laughs> just clip that. It's fine. I told you about some of the characters you played, Harlan. <laughs> See, I'm just very sad because because uh, you missed Wh you missed the bit with Will saying salty meat. You can get that anywhere. Yeah, true, <laughs> but still, gotta love some salty meat, eh? Indeed. So, welcome back, everybody. We are back in. Uh, we're back in this. Don't worry, sirs. Just endure it. Just try and listen. It'll be fine. So. Uh, as you finish up your conversation, you leave the underground, you go about your business around town until eventually you find a large parade of individuals. You see uh, all townsfolk kind of lining what look to be these pre-made bar uh, barricades that have been made and they've just been set up out of like simple wood and that sort of, that sort of thing. And there are guards lining the way and you see from just over your distance, Elzin, you get the best look at this. The rest of you, uh, I'd like you to make a perception check with advantage, please. Yeah, your passive perception is high enough that you can just see over. Quirk, you're finding it a little bit difficult because you're on you're on the ground and Behold just picks you mm. up and puts you on his shoulders. Uh, if everyone else would like to roll for your perceptions. So that would be Malcolm and... Yep. Oh no! Oh yeah! When yeah, one that it disappeared off. into there but it came back, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, all of you are able to see this. You watch as a very regal figure looking like heavy white robes golden trim to it carrying what looks to be a large book in one hand and what looks to be a uh almost like an incense uh lantern on their holding in their right as they're going along they're walking along they're giving nods to the local people there's cheers there's whoops from people there's clapping and you see behind them an array of monks in white and grey robes walking along with their uh, with their hands inside their sleeves brought to get uh, brought up to their chest as they're walking along, and they seem to be murmuring a very slow prayer as they're going. As they're walking along, the main head figure that you see has complete white hair. Their skin is almost pure white, and their eyes the same. As they give off this essence and glow of uh, light to themselves. Most of you recognize this as an Azamar, the individual walking along with the, uh, the light shining through them and around them radiating off. You see a few individuals begin to um, begin to like shout, uh, shout thank yous and praise and they give nods and there's a few individuals going around um, giving alm alms to the poor and that sort of thing, uh, helping those out who need it. And they're going along and they're making their way down the street towards the uh, towards the Cathedral of Light. And as they reach there, they speak there. There's a procession. There's a, uh, there's a lot of praying from a lot of individuals. Um, from the monks that you see, you see all manner of individuals. Short ones, medium, tall. You see all, all manners. Uh, all manner of them walking along. Uh, a few carry books at their side, prayer books. Some more carry uh, the incense lanterns and they're swinging them back and forth. Uh, other individuals are doing what they can to help the local people. They move through and you don't get any real sense of maliciousness from any of them. Well, of course, you never do until they're out of sight. Well, um, Sasha's just sort of trying to blend in with the crowd, like doing the same sort of things they are, but just trying to stay sort of like very average. Okay, so you're staying average, staying at the back of the troop, um, kind of just staying out of it, as it were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're watching along, you're seeing what's what's being said, what's being uh, what's being done, and you see 
the you see Algar and Regan walk up and they shake hands with the individual, they greet them and that sort of thing. And um, you see other individuals, more noble folks, some of whom you recognize, Elzion, as you've got to know a few of them around the town. Uh, they shake their hands, they go over and they welcome them in. And uh, as this takes place, Algar speaks up um, to the rest of the town. He holds what looks to be some kind of uh, green stone to his throat. And uh, he almost shouts out to the crowd uh, with some kind of thaumaturgy uh, essence to it. Today begins the day of the righteous. The day when we will all mourn and bless those who lived and died for the Empire. Those who helped and those who continued to supply and nourish our community and our people. The day of the religion and celebration begins now. He gives a bow and a lot of people at this point, they begin to um, filter away slowly but surely, going back to homes and so on, and all of the shops and so on begin to close down. Individuals close their shops. A uh, few games are still running, but very few. There are food stores and there are pubs that are open, There are, um, but they're all mostly deserted. People seem to be going back home for the day. <clears throat> it's about 2 p.m. at this point. Well, that was um, That's interesting. So, would you care to do anything, or shall we move through time until one of you wants to do something? I think move through time if no one's speaking up. Yes, laying low is probably the best strategy, and have nothing particular in mind to try and achieve. Okay. So you proceed to to lay low. While this is all going on, uh, Malcolm goes up to Sasha and asks, um, Sasha, do you still have the Iron Stone? And are you using it? Oh, of course I still have it. Um, <clears throat> I'll just mainly hang on to it to sell it at some point. It's, uh, I would I like really to think. use it. Oh. I mean, it would be useful ask, for, what for finding dragons, mainly. If there's anything kind of around in the area that I might not be able to see or sense. I mean, under most circumstances, it's going to be a bit difficult to sense them, given it only has a 25-foot range. But, uh, well, I suppose that makes sense. Though, um, I mean, I could... Honestly. I mean, you could also use it for defense. You could maybe attune it to that of a creature or something. And when going to sleep, if you sense it nearby, you wake up. Like how we got ambushed by the spiders a few times. Hmm, a good idea. Well, I, I am happy to hand it over to you. Do with it what you will. Uh, Thank you. Oh, but uh, my price will be, you've got to come down to the forges again with me tonight and uh, we'll see about uh, getting you a shield. Uh, you already made the shield. You spent your time on the previous day doing that. Oh, right. I forgot we did that. <clears throat> we did. Uh, can we do the, the, the meditation-y roll thingy? Hmm. Go, ahead. Go ahead. Each of you make a d20 roll, please. Okay. Teacher-wise, you uh, begin to assist more in the meditation and the understanding of the metals. And uh, Malcolm, going through, begins to get a general sense of it. It's a little bit difficult to understand, as being attuned to the forge is something he's never done before. However, being attuned to nature, you, he begins to pick up on different threats. Ones that are slightly different to yours, but lead to the same end. And he begins to make the connection, begins to hear and begins to understand that metal sometimes wants to go to what it wants rather than what the creator wants. Most yes. metals are malleable enough that they can be made into anything. Certain ones, on the other hand, wants to become specific objects. Ones that are of particularly powerful nature. Um, uh, mistral. Wait. Mysterial is one of those. Myster yes. Mysterium. Myst no, Mysterium was the... Uh, Alloy. Oh, Mysterial yeah, yes. is the... Ah, yes. Yeah. Mysterial yes. being 
one of those few. Feel the feel the metal. Feel it. The metal is nature. It's stone and and ore melted and, and meshed together. It just it is nature, and we simply shape it. Feel the volcano. It's raw power. It's it's natural wonderment. That's that's where your connection lies. He nods. I believe he understands it, and with the connection to nature, it has a little bit of a different aspect to what you would have interpreted, but it's enough to get the job done. Right. Now, hold on to that feeling, and when you and when you can, try and call out. Try and find the heart of the volcano. Okay. Try and find the Turan. Okay. I would like both of you to make a check with disadvantage because you are not at a shrine. That is fair. Okay. Check with disadvantage from both of you. This is just a straight d20 roll for success. So, on your part, Sasha, you realize that you're not at a shrine. This kind of thing is going to be difficult to make. Um, if you had some kind of powerful uh, like reliquary with like a series of magical artifacts that are pure homage to her and have been kind of consecrated in a shrine, that sort of thing, then they oh. could potentially be made for that. I actually have an idea. You'd need a series it... of items, not just one. Because okay. I know what you're I thinking. Was... Yeah. You know, you need a series of items for that sort of thing. But on your part, Malcolm, you you reach out as best you can. And with more of your attunement to nature and less of your understanding of the divine magics, it's a little bit more difficult to grasp and understand what you're really looking for. And with that in mind, you don't get much success um, starting out, but in a more consecrated and religious location, it could be potentially very successful. I think that's as far as we're going to get here. There are shrines to uh, to Rand, but they're not the easiest to find. Um, well, we will we will find them, and if you still wish to to know know more of her, that'll be where you can connect with her. Okay. So, with that taken care of. Uh, you now own the Iron Stone, Malcolm, so go ahead and add that to your inventory. Uh, the Iron Stone weighs nothing, but it allows you to set it to a particular creature, uh, or a creature type, so fey, beast, undead, dragon. Um, I'll give you a list of all the things it can become, abomination, monstrosity, things like that as well, um, as well as humanoid and so on. Uh, and... Anything within a 25-foot radius which pings up on as that kind of creature will be highlighted to you. And that's what's going to help you see it. Uh, it is attunement, so you do need to spend time with it. If you wish to attunement, you can now. Same goes with the rest of you. If you have anything which you need to restore, hit, uh, your hit count should be at 5 now. Um, make sure you've got your hit points done. If you wanted to prepare or unprepare any spells, you're welcome to do so. Oh, Craiglord, um, could I have my ring back, please? The ring of speed? Craig yes. Like I, mm. I like feeling fast. Yes, my ring, please. Hmm, very well, I suppose so. I'll make the ring. <laughs> where? Of interest, where, where did you get those, ri those rings? I don't believe I recall. Neither do I. Um, can I history check that, Chris? Well, you got the rings. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's see if I have them on my shopping tab, because if not, you randomly pick them up. Be in my shopping notes if you did. Eleven. Let's see if there are any rings of speed in my shopping list here. I'm pretty... Are they the ones we picked up in inside that little cave wall? Uh, what do you mean, cave wall? No, maybe that was just the Iron Stone. That was just the Iron Stone. The Rings of Speed, you... Uh, 
Uh, oh, the rings of speed were in the um, loot piles, I think. Oh, the right. the cave. Right so. Mm. I'm fairly certain, anyway. Or you bought them from. I, um... I'm fairly certain they're just a. Uh, they're, they just seem to be a uh, long strider. They they seem to have been imbued with the the power of the long strider. You could probably make make uh, some yourself. Uh, given a little time and, and effort. Yes, that's what I was thinking. No, I remember where they're from. Okay. Mm. Two rings of speed. In the library chamber below the Morbin, um, the Morbin base, where you found the desecrated shrine to uh, Tiamat mm. and mm. the Vad. Right, uh, yeah. Oh, they were there. Yeah. Where you got in through the, the door. Yeah, they're in the library chamber. It uh, must be cursed. Books. It must be cursed. Cursed. It must be cursed puts it on anyway. <laughs> I want speed. No. <laughs> now I that's have that's speed. A, a strange a strange version of a speed addict, but okay. <laughs> it's called speed, it's bad for it. yeah, yeah, this is definitely drugs. Yeah. Of course. So mm, well some you in the future, perhaps. I haven't, uh, I haven't access to the spell required, but... Anyway, for now, I'll let you take it back. Yeah, let me. I'm just putting it on. I'm tuning. It's mine now. Okay, so you're tuned to it. You have the bonus speed. So. Uh, with that... Anything, anybody else want to do anything? Or we'll move on to the next few days. Or the last few days of the festival. I think I'm good to um, move on. Th 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 there's there's one very quick thing I thought of. I'd like to use my uh, inner shard just to sense where the the uh, if the other shards are in the same place is still. Okay. Um. I don't believe it requires a check. Which... I, no, it doesn't. It's just you concentrating. Yeah. I'm going to type to you. It's probably just going to be something like, everything's still in the same place. Oh, no. Oh, that would be oh. a great Oh, no. <laughs> well, I, I presume we're, we're all together. Yeah, you're laying low, so you're either in the underground or you're traveling around as a group because you can't be picked off. Well, I'm guessing this is the one that was in Fort Milligan. Yes. Well, okay. I've got some good news and some bad news. We're very close to one of the shards. Just the bad oh, news. No. You, bad news is you. You remember that creature that attacked the academy a while back? Yes. Yeah, that shard was around uh, her neck, I believe. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yes. Well, worrying. I don't and know what's more worrying. Learning she that she has it, one of it them. It is in the city. I'm not sure if mm. she has the shard. It's normally tied to an artifact. The shard's just an extra thing on top of the artifact. Well, I mean... Well, it's possible that she, sure, she saw it as a um, hindrance and simply had the thing removed. But maybe it's unlikely that we'll get that lucky. If she's here, well, at least we'll be dealing with two birds with one stone. Mm. Well, or as I like to say, two dragons with one giant fuck off cannon. You really need to work on your sayings there, Sasha. Mm -hmm. no, don't talk oh. to me, talk to the dwarven elders. What do you think? Is it worth looking around for her? Maybe, but I mean, if you can sense her, there's really no no need for us to go yes. about willy nilly. It's not exactly. Really what that sort of precision fun, do you have? Yeah, what what precision do I have for that class? Or... You know, it's general location, so Sorry. you could probably narrow it down to inner city or outer city. In which case, I would say inner city at this point. That is the closest you would get. The closest I can tell is that it's within the inner city. Well, that's... Expect explosions. Mm. Mm. It 
might be that someone else has gotten to it and, well, we just need to get it. Hear me out here. Look, we might all want to rush, either run away or rush in and get it. I think our best option is to, to, is to talk to Rohal and Algier and see what they can organize. Might be, even be a good idea just to wait it out, see what happens. I don't think it's... It doesn't feel like it's coincidence that, the, that this Church of Light fella has arrived and it just so happens that that, necrom, that necromancer's here. Ne- necromantress? Necromancer. It's not a... Oh, lovely. Oh, that's lovely. That's nice. A very progressive necromancer. Before the Church of Light arrived. <laughs> The whole... Sorry, it's... It, you, you're, that, you're, the common is such a strange language. Uh-huh. Um... Yeah, she Anyhow. was... She was in the city before the Church of Light arrived. True, but she was looking for information. Mm. But... Well... Well, if she's as subtle as she was last time, we should be able to find her. Well. If it's someone else, then... Well, I'll... regardless, uh, this shard is certainly worth following up. The question mm-hmm. is, are we the right ones to do it? I still, I say we talk to Algar and Rohal. They are in charge of this city, both mm-hmm. portions of it, and they are they are the people we can inform. It's worth Honestly, at least letting them know. Yeah, Who knows? they may have some. They may have a little more information. Given the um We have a direct line to Algair, you might as well just I am just gonna use get it. Right. I am going to get the thing in my bob. What's it actually called again, Chris? The spell phone. No, it's not. Uh it's a contact stone. Honestly, I'm gonna go with Harlan on this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> spell phone. Spell a stone with all of your B. More accurate. There it is. Oh, a. Here we go. Spell a stone it is. Okay, this is now go. canon. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so. You contact right. uh, Algar? Yup. Okay. Yeah, I'll be back in a second. Alright, so. As you attempt to contact Algar, is that what you need to say? Algar, one of the shards is in the city. Presumed to be with the being that attacked the academy not too long ago. That's the end of the message. It's going to be quick because it's like five seconds, isn't it? Yeah. There is no response. Well, okay, that's worrying. No response, guys. Um. I suggest we go up to the fort and try to find them. I know where as usual haunting grounds are. At least we might be able to find one of his silent guards. Don't worry, I don't think that's their actual name. So I tell us anything. Anyway. They're not far off. Don't say stuff like that because I need them to give me information. They're silent knights. Silent knights. There's no one near Christmas for that pun, but did you make that at Christmas when you're doing this at Christmas? What do you mean? Silent nights. No, I, I get what you mean, but no, this is not an at Christmas thing. But to be fair, our campaign has been going on since basically Christmas. Yes, so. I know! Hmm. And you did meet Algar on episode 2, so maybe it was, yes. maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was just you made a pun and, it's, and you've had to live with it now. <clears throat> Who knows? Of summer, man. Guess we'll never know. So, you going to the fort then? Yes. Okay, so is this the... Which day is this? Is this the beginning of the day of celebration when he did the announcement, or is this on the following day? Uh, following day, as we've already gone past. Mm, yes, let's... Day. um. Okay, so, following day, you go out into the city, there are a lot of people Back. again. Going out into the city, there are a lot of people moving around. They're enjoying themselves. They're generally celebrating as it is. As it is their celebration. 
Um, with your passive perception, you pick up a few things here and there. People talking about a grand speech in the center of town in about two hours, about what Algair and Regan are going to say to the rest of the city. Introducing the new governor to everybody officially, and also uh, commencing the Day of Celebration's uh, mourning period. And what you would generally gather from what people know from um, from just the festival in general, Malcolm mentioning it as well. Uh, when these kinds of things take place, usually anybody involved will be disconnected from the rest of the world for the day so that the events can proceed as normal. And you gather with your general smarts that that might be why he hasn't responded. It's like turning your uh, phone off in the cinema. So, how would you like to proceed? Guys? I have no idea what just happened. Um, just, just get to, let's just get to the fort. Yeah, we need to... Can't we, just we, need, we need to have a look around, and we need to let people know before we do so. So let's head over there. Okay, so you head to the fort. You get there, and you notice that it's heavily guarded outside, but the doors are also... Um, also seem to have a lot more individuals on the inside. Less training, more preparing. Hmm. Almost as if they're prepared to become additional guard. Hmm. And as you approach the door, the individual says, uh, halt. Um, I'm fairly certain I remember your face being through here before. Yes. Algar isn't about at the moment. He's preparing for the announcement in the center of town. Understandable. Oh, wow. Well. Mm -hmm. Damn. What time, when would he be free? Probably two hours after the announcement takes place, so in about four hours or so. Four so to the, five the hours. The announcement but something's itself going... is in two hours. Yes. Due to the nature of how this has occurred. Knowing know. our luck, chances are it, that it'll happen at the event. If this is something you can tell me, I can pass it on to whoever. And if you want to hire up, then um, the lieutenant is about. Your choice, we just, Albion. We, we just need a message to get to Alga. We don't need to make this more complicated than it needs to be. I'll get it to his next in command if you would like me to. Okay. Just it needs to get to Alga specifically. If we just have to find That's the call, boys. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, there's just like a horse and cart just charging off. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just there's like a there's, there's one guy just... with a thaumaturgy spell and just going. <laughs> <laughs> That's how police are. <laughs> <Okay. clears throat> anyway. anyway, but uh, yes. Stop following Anita. Anyway, uh, just like, yes, just get the message that a shard is within the city to Algear. Understood. I'll get it to his commander. And he gestures over to an individual. And then... it's important to mention that this is the this one would be have been involved in the incident at the university. As you mentioned, at the individual. The individual looks back to you and he gives the nod to the other individual who um, seems to be some kind of messenger and he runs off uh, back into the fort. Do you guys want to stick around or? I suppose. I, I, think... I want to get to this event, to the actual announcement. Okay. Would there be time to go and visit Gree and Avod yeah. for, before get, getting there in time for the event? Yeah, plenty. If yeah, they're at a stall, hours. they'll be near the center of town. You know where their stall is, but uh, otherwise they'll be in the underground. Yeah, we should talk to them, because Abod might have a link to this necromancer. And Gree... Well, if there's anyone I'd want to have with me when we're mur trying to murder a magical necromancer with horrible, terrifying things, it, it's it's horrible, terrifying Gree. Pipe fire with fire. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. So, uh, where would you like to try first? Would you like to try the center of town, or would you like to try underground? 
it doesn't uh, really what's... matter, but if you, whichever order you choose, you can get to the event in time. Just ever which one you want to go to first. I mean, if we're already above ground, it's... we might as well yeah, go. Okay. Unless um... it's like directly on the way or pass through if we were to come back up from the underground. It, it will be it. roughly there. It's basically going... Because of where you are, you're basically going straight south to the centre of town and then going uh, west towards... Um, west towards the entrance that you know into the Undercity. Uh, the the shop that he has is a little bit off the centre to the north, so you can dodge the centre if you wanted to. Yeah, let's head to, let's head to the stall first. I, I can see them being around, still being around, trying to sell stuff. Okay. You you head down, you get to the stall, and you see most of the stalls are shut up around here. People seem to have shut up, gone home, or going to the events in the centre of town. You do see, however, uh, you see an elven figure in a hooded ro uh, in what looks to be hooded robes, just wearing them, standing there, selling a few things. And you see another individual in similar hooded robes with a mask over their face. Uh, you recognize this as uh, Gree's usual disguise and his accompany, Abod. Right, uh, let's, you also see what uh, looks to be a, uh, a black dog under the table. Oh, please, please, please. Thirteen. Yep. Which has a morbid oh, side and a non-morbid side. Was, I it. was... I was hoping it was the dog. The, the 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 hellhound um the servers let's go no <laughs> if that thing was under the it's table that's a big table the hellhound's like it's a three by three tiles <laughs> okay 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 but hear me out here hear me out here you've already seen that Gree can do some illusion magic Granted, no, but he's not oh my god oh my god have this little yorkshire terrier there and then every time it steps there's a big boom boom it will still, <laughs> still take up the spaces Sure he transformed it into a table and a tent. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, I love it. Oh, man. Yeah, so yes. let's, let's head over and, and see if we can't get them alone for a second. You head over, and as you get close, he goes, Ah, my friend. Abba told me you visited earlier in this week. It's good to see you here. Good to see How you, too. How may we help you? I wish I could say it was just a courtesy call, but, um, mm -hmm. well... We've... Elzion has sensed the presence of, uh... El Elzion, have you mentioned this previously your ability to... to agree? I, anyhow... But which of my many abilities are you talking about? Ab Abod does go... Uh, he's told me a lot about what I... about himself to me. Um... Right. There's the shard thing, because I inspected him yeah. to make sure it wasn't dangerous, and it's fine. Um, yes. There's the uh, the fact that he's a psychic. There's, uh... It, it, it's there's the shard Farnsworth. thing. It's, it's the shard thing. Well, let's not talk about Farnsworth right now. <laughs> it's the shard thing. Um, as I... The shard, as you know, as we may have mentioned, one of them was around the neck of that necromancer we mentioned. Um, Kisrin? Potentially, the the one the one that uh, that attacked the university that we met that we talked about. Yes, uh, yes. The one which you suspect is uh, my old master, Kizrin. Could could be could be. Yes. Yes. Uh, well. Well, as it as it stands, we've sensed her. We sensed that shard the shard that was around her neck, Sense and it's in. And it's in the city, the inner city, I believe. Elvin, you can. He looks at Gree, and Gree looks back and goes, "If that, if that's the case, do you want us to prepare ourselves, get the Undercity on high alert?" I think it would probably be for the best. Uh, try and get to Rohal if you can. I don't know where she'll be though, given the event that's happening. We're going to be heading to the event. If anything's going to happen today, well, I can't think of a better place than there. He watches Gree, pulls out a quill and a bit of paper, and he begins to write something down. And then he scrolls it up and just shoves it into the into the back of the dog's head. And he watches 13, absorbs it, and then proceeds to just run off mm. down the street at breakneck speed. 
I, I don't know what's going to happen, but if she is working as they were previously, and the he- and one of the the second in command of the Church of Light is here, well, coincident coincidences may exist, but down to the but I'm not going to take that risk. Hmm. Hmm. That does make sense. We'll keep a watch out. See if we see anything. If anything's going to happen. It's either either happen at a quiet time during the night, or it'll happen during a busy time to increase the fatalities. Either way, it's good. It's best that you know about it. Gree, if there's anyone who can deal with the necromancer, I, 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 I'd honestly say it's probably you. Um, Abbott, you've got all, you've got experience, and I don't, I don't even know the limit of your abilities, let, let alone the, or I don't even know your abilities, let alone the limit. I'll ha- I have an idea. Um, Gree, you okay to watch the shop? I can watch the shop, don't worry. You go and get yourself prepared. I've already got all my things on me. So. Anything you care to buy? I can give you a health potion or two if you need it. And then you can pay me back for it later if you want. We were planning to oh, get a I... load of healing potions, weren't we? I think we may be running low on those, yes. Yeah. How many I'm would you not... like? I can go for the bog standard discount for you lot. 40 gold a piece. Uh, if you want the bigger ones, I can sell them for two, for 210 if you would like. For the greater ones. Uh, how much is still in the party fund? Like, a couple thousand? Yeah, about I think that. He... Okay. <laughs> Well, uh, I say it's... we take a load of the the smaller ones because there's not it, 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 what what's the thing? It's like what what it's like two D four plus four. regular ones are two D four plus two. Greater plus two. are forty four plus four. Forty four plus four. Like you might as well just buy two of the uh, two of the two of the thing two of the smaller ones, and it's much cheaper than the greater ones. True, True but then you have to two... spend two bonus actions administering. I know, them. I know, I know. But like usually, we tend to get into situations where we only use them when we're about to die, not when we actually need to like heal up mid battle. We could we could split between them, but like I feel like a, a load of the forty ones will last uh, will help will serve us a lot better than yes. a couple of the big. I would recommend that all of us be carrying at least one at any one time. Yeah. Liz, I I still have one left because I've I, I've had okay. them for, I've had I've, I've, and you have you have other ways to heal people as well. Yeah. So, so you're like, probably fine with just the one. Yeah, for the moment, yeah. Yeah. But, like, everyone else should stock up a fair amount, because I've got the heals, and I can self-heal, and I can yeah. heal other people, but, same like... With, um, same with uh, Malcolm. Yeah. I don't know if he's carrying any. Behold can't be healed, but I still mm-hmm. want him to be carrying one so that he can heal other people. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to hold on to a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. That's since, fair. Uh... You I tend to not... stay out of, of fights. Yes. I can um I can hang back and move in with with a potion I think when needed. You, you and I have no you... other means for healing. Yeah. So I'd you... like to be carrying more than one. Yeah. You and, and Elzian stay out of stuff, but like Malcolm and Malcolm and you are probably the ones I'd see with the most healing items on them. Mm-hmm. Actually this would be using your herbalism kit, not the wis- not wisdom. So your herbalism kit I believe is a plus six. So anything which is not a six or higher. So that would be that one and that one, I believe, would be the only ones which fail. I don't know if I'm wrong, but I believe it's a six plus. If not, then this one gets removed as well. I can't remember. This is him making health potions, by the way. Oh, oh, oh yes, yes. This it's is plus seven. seven as well. It's plus seven. Okay, so that would include five plus. So these two would still be out. So that means that you made, uh, you made six regular health potions and you spent... 260 gold on supplies so you made a effectively a 10 gold you made a 40 gold piece profit from that total perfect so you've got six regular health potions which you can distribute as you see fit and remove 260 gold from the party fund i believe my maths is right with that so it should be okay do you want to maybe uh drop drop enough for one of the greater healing potions for uh you 
And there'll be two, yeah, if we've got 210 six, for that. And you've already got one. Yeah. I'd I've say, got one. Yeah. Okay, distributing them wise, I will say for now, everybody gain a, uh, a regular healing potion, except for Malcolm who gets two out of the six that you just made. So everybody increase your health potion cap by one, and then we'll deal with the number later. Okay, that's, that's the six distributed. Then I'd say... What do you think? One or two larger health potions? Uh, you you know me. I, I I prefer to be frugal when possible. So I'd say one, but at the same time. At the same time. Yeah. Just people's you, lives on the line. Yeah. Take get 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 two. I, I'm saying this out of character. I'm not doing in character shit right now. I'm just mess a game. Yeah, that's just fine. Get, let, let, let's yeah. get just get done and let's move on. Get, get yeah, two. Let's get, get two. two. Get I'll two. take one. Okay. And, so take. Um, so take another 420 uh, gold pieces out of the bag of holding. And who is taking the two potions? I'd say I'd take one Nelsian and take the other. Okay. Queglon and Nelsian, add one potion of greater healing. It heals 4d4 plus 4. So that will be Minimum the majority of, of Elsian's health pool. <laughs> what do you mean majority? If it gets max, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> So does mm. this remind me of how much that heals for again? 4d4 plus 4. 20. 20 max, 8 min. Yeah. Which isn't so, terrible. I, I, yeah, hold on. I have 29 health, I'll have you know. That's why I said the majority of your hit points. I yeah. was right. So, you buy these, uh, Abod runs off, 13's gone, uh, gone to the Undercity. Um, so what are you guys going to do from here? To where the event's supposed to take place. And wait. Yes, if we can. Okay. If we can catch anyone before, that would be ideal. Okay. You. Uh, I think to know is we we really need this to happen under the radar. So. Mm. What with the what with the Church of Lights being in the city, we don't want another public event. Yes. Very well. How long do we have to the announcement starts, Gus? Um, well, I can have it start now if you guys are ready. But if it wasn't starting now, how long do we have? We need effectively have an hour and a half. An hour and a half. Okay. So what I'm thinking, guys, is that we get we get the un. Oh no, we've already got the answer involved. I'm sorry. Never mind. If not, me. So yeah. Also, it was said, how much do I take out for 50? Uh, 420. There you go. Just to get the numbers right. So. Amazing. Do any of you want to do anything then? I don't think there's anything left to do. Okay. How many platinum would I take out for that much? 42. Hmm. Anything you wish to share, Holland? I just remembered I have Sending. It would take one of my third level spell slots, which I'd really rather not waste, but at the same time, the I've got Sending. Situation. Yeah. Who, okay, who, who do we need to contact immediately that we would be best served by contacting? My, my thoughts are straying between, oh, Rohal is Reagan. going to get, Reagan? Do we desperately need to contact Regan right this moment? Really, Regan? And he has got the automaton that really did help out last time. Uh, true. It really I'll did help a... out last time. It threw Sasha. Ah! And it, and that is what killed <laughs> yeah. the creature. And almost Nothing killed. Nothing else, just me. <laughs> I reckon we would have spotted the creature. This creature would have caused trouble by now. That's what I'm thinking. Hmm, maybe. She has she control of it and supply of them. An unlimited supply of them. She managed to get them into the city before now. It's entirely possible. They can go invisible. Be. So it doesn't Sorry, they can what? Yeah, they can go invisible. They can uh, go what? invisible. They can short range teleport as well. 
So I hate everything. <laughs> um, uh, yes, they definitely could be suddenly reconsidering all of my planning. <laughs> also, mm -hmm. um, they don't look to be particularly expendable. Mm. There must be a limit to how many she can actually make of those in a short time. So she probably wouldn't waste them on a random attack. Still, at the same time, ha having the automatons about would be uh, fantastic. And Reagan could probably get the word to others quite quickly. Yes. Okay, fine. Send to Reagan. Right. I'm, I'm spending one of my third level spell slots, and I'm casting Sending, and I'm sending to Reagan. Uh, necromancer in city. Inner city. It, necromancer in inner city. Same as university. Prepare, prepare automatons. We don't know when they'll attack. Or oh, if they'll attack. Or what they're up to. But be prepared. That should be... Yeah, that's within 25. I think that's that was good. under 25? Yeah, yeah I, I believe, I believe that's it was fine. Like, I think it was 23, 24. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. We look like idiots if they actually aren't, and they did just leave the shard behind. That was... But... No, that would don't. be fucking Shut stupid. Up. Yeah. So. If you're sending spells sent, you weave the symbols, you send the message. Alright, you've sent it. So. Uh, are you guys going to wait for the thing to begin then? I think so. Um, yeah. I think oh, so. also, the thing I just noticed. Uh, Chris, my... um. My level two maximum spells is zero now for some reason. What did you do? I don't know. I'm very scared. I'm sorry. Oh, are you breaking things again? I'm maybe breaking yeah. my important character sheets. Uh, if the number on it is zero and there is no formula, then you're the one to blame, oh. not me. Oh, there's a formula. It's just it's not. It, I don't know how to change it or what's happening there. All right. I'm scared of the numbers, the maths, they scare me. Your existence scares me, Harlan. As it should. Wait, what? This formula's wrong. Now that definitely wasn't me, because I ain't never touched that shit. Why does it say that? If that is less than three, then the spell slots equals zero. That's fine. If it's less than, however, if it's left less than four, then it's two. If it's less than five, then it's three. Otherwise, it's otherwise it's three. Okay, there we go. That's just solved it. I've realised what's wrong with the formula because there was a zero at the end. There should have just been a three. There was ah. there was there was needless formula stuff there. Okay. That's okay. what the problem was. Okay. Okay, that's fine. So, problem <clears throat> solved with that. Back, back in game. Technical difficulties over. So, yes, exactly. So. Uh, yeah, we'll, um... I'm perfectly happy to time skip to the start of the yeah. event. So, Same. as you're all standing there within the crowd, there are several individuals around you, there are guards up ahead, and you see they've set up some kind of temporary stage in the centre. You see there's a couple of monks here and there, um, and you watch as Algar and Regan uh, and the uh, individual who you do know the oh, name of, if you remember it, as you, uh, as they all leave what looks to be some kind of tent and they all head up, the crowd cheers and whoops, the, and then uh, one of the guards like raises his hand and everybody shush, uh, shushes. As Alga uh, raises up the stone once again and says, Welcome, everybody. It is good to see you all here. The first of our few announcements before we get this morning underway for those that we have lost. A few special words to our, for our new governor who is here. Our new high governor will be leading this town, and for those who have not met him, he, will, he is a very generous and kind individual. 
He will be going around taverns here and there on the final day of the celebration for those who wish to meet with him. He will be guarded, so do please watch yourselves, but he will be mingling with the local people, getting to know them and who they are. We also dedicate ourselves and say that we are sad and mournful towards the loss of our High Chancellor, Rogan Black. Okay. An individual who worked for the city for a long time. He was kind and generous, and he helped many. And we wish that he rests peacefully, and that he did reach his final end in his goal. Regan here is happy to hear that the infrastructure and the industry of the city is booming. It is growing, and we and the Emperor will be expanding, seeking new places and building new cities when we can. Potentially going south, making a larger port city, when, if it is amenable. And we all invite you to join in that celebration and the creation of this town, for those who seek opportunity. But, now over to the day of mourning, and I will ha now hand you over to the Guardian. And he takes a few steps back and gives like a mild bow, as you watch as the Azimar takes center stage. People of Adamanthia, you have lost much, and you, but you have gained so much more than that. You are a group of great people, but where there is greatness, it comes with a cost. A sacred artifact of ours was stolen. The staff of the Dawn Marshals. Stolen away by thieves in the night, individuals who would abuse its power to destroy and bring down Adamanthia. Individuals proclaiming to be the Dawn Marshals. They seek to strike down the Empire and destroy the Emperor himself. They themselves would seek the wreckage of this town. But this town is the one that harbingers it. The one that brings this doom. And as many mourn, more will mourn thereafter, for the devastation to be caused by them. Let this be a lesson on their heads. And you watch as he raises his hands up, you watch as six uh, celestial white wings rise from his back. All of the crowd ooze, and you watch as monks take their place, lining themselves up around the stage, and some walk on stage. Adamanthia is the cause of this blight. That which destroys Motalin's image. And an infection um, must be brought down, and you watch as oh, this is fly not into good. the air. And he strikes both of his hands into... Uh, onto either side, and you watch as a red mist begins to form around them. Algar and Regan both at this time, Elzin, you notice Fucking this immediately. Run. You watch as their hands are tied back behind their back, almost like in a hog tie, by these red spectral chains. And you watch as he does this, he raises his hands up, and they disappear, along with four other monks. The four of the ones who corrupt this city will be taken care of. And now... For its people, I give a gift. No, this is not right at all. No, 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 And no, you no, watch no. As, okay. as three of the monks on stage draw back their hoods. And Elzin, you see this now as there's a scream within your mind. You see the necromancer there with the, with the shard around her neck. You see the other two. The large figures that grow in size. As they pull the robes back, they collapse to reveal bandages and a singular red crystal adorning their head. These ones are different, though. They are covered in metallic spines, covering their bodies, shards and metal. No longer just their fingers that are metal, but their backs, their heads. One of them is unwrapped with a sewed shut mouth and eyes as it stands there glaring at the crowd. There's a gasp as people begin to step back. And you watch as from the crowd, a bunch of individuals begin to melt away. Their flesh falling to the ground, revealing skeletons beneath. As the individual on stage laughs. This is what you get, Adamanthia. 
for all that you've done. As he points his hand out, you watch as a large single ball rolls out from his sleeve and into the air and it rises. And there's an explosion. You watch as shards of light explode outwards and rain down almost like a firework. The people are stunned, they don't know what to think of it, before there's screams and panic. Individuals running in all directions. The guards trying their best, automatons on the street, trying to fight the undead that seems to have risen up out of nowhere. And you just watch as these individual pieces of the of this explosion in the sky hit areas around you, shattering buildings and breaking them across and scattering them across the land before you. You see as she stands there, she ra you watch as the necromancer raises her hand. So let Adamanthia fall. I would like you all to roll initiative. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, can um, I just say I'm going to cast Danger Sight. So, Danger Sight. Okay. It's be a plus ten to initiative. For five side points, so it's, it's not exactly cheap. Out of character, does anybody have any problems with me provoking them? Oh no, think, we fucking kill. I think we... we're gonna have to go for Plan B on the whole lay low thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can I? Can I? Weird. But can I get their attention yeah, though? I have something I want to do to get their attention. Oh, you're gonna do the don't. Maybe do, but don't. I'm very I want to do the thing. What's the I gotta do the thing. Lighthouse. Okay. Well. If it was just them, it's just then to get maybe... their attention off the people. I need that one, and I need that. Uh, uh infernal. Yes, I'm bringing it back down to a six axis and roll. Okay. What's okay. <laughs> like going? Do? I rolled a six, then I moved the dice, and it flopped. And it flopped. Okay. Yes. Noted. But yeah, so, I just wanna I just wanted to kind of <clears throat> get their attention away from the people. That's all. So my positioned people. on the stage, you see her standing the there, fuck? and the two guys standing beside her. Up above, you see the Azamar individual flying in the sky. He will not have a tile just yet, but I will, however, use these to mark how high up he has gone. Oh, I also need to roll a reckoning. Yeah. What are you doing? Get back. I don't like this. I love him. I really Chris. don't like him. Why? Why do you like Chris, him? Chris, I love him. <laughs> you don't have all the information. Well, which is, I love Okay, him. right. These two have got to die. This guy is my son now. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Do you mean the necromancer or do you mean the, the, the floaty guy? The floaty guy. The guy. But this this guy's cool. Okay. <laughs> that one. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you want that one. <laughs> oh fuck! I'll take the right one. <laughs> just, just, as long as I get the artifact for. Like... Fresh memory. What level were we when we fought these guys the first time? Uh, level three, I think. Three or four. God, I hope it was three. <laughs> oh oh. Fuck. oh. Oh, yeah, just, oh, just, yeah, oh no. Yeah, Sai, you, you, si, you know what to do. I only have two right? AOE. I, don't, I, don't, I have yeah. lightning. I can only hit two people at a time. Okay, I, and these I, I are just... scattered around. You guys, by the way. Uh, oh, I need Featherwing. The exception of Will. He's not there. You guys are positioned about here. Sorry, please, Will. please, Will, help. Will, Will, we need you, Will. We need you Will, so bad. Have taken hope. far longer to get here than you planned, Chris. Hmm? Have we taken far longer to get here than you planned? What do you mean? Get to this stage. I don't know what you mean. We have, haven't we? What? Because... Because what? I just get that feeling. Okay. They are all around you, but they are generally... Uh, generally in combat with guards, so if you what wish to run... What are these, bananas? No, what? It's debris. That is... That's where oh, the explosion boy. took place, and then the and then the beams of light came down and struck the buildings, destroying them. Why is there bananas on the ground? Here? There's not bananas, bananas about... they're pieces of wood. Yay. It's wood texture. No, no, he is right. The buildings are made of bananas, for scale. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that I mean, mean they're really easy to climb, then? 
Huh? Jesus oh. fucking Christ, how many of these are there? Oh, there's plenty, but they're gonna get destroyed over time because I can't be bothered to spawn in the guards. The majority of these are gonna get fought by guards, but you can choose to carve a path if you wish. Apparently you have been unnoticed. The street is filled with people. I'm not gonna spawn them in, I'm only spawning the enemies. And the people are gonna try and run. They are being slaughtered left, right, and center. There are guards doing what they can. So, I believe now is the time that we we start off the initiative. So We have a plus ten, right? Twenty five yes, to twenty. Don't. You don't, I don't uh, twenty. Oh, yeah. I don't have the ability to give everyone a plus nice. 10. Yes. Okay. Ah. Uh, hold on. I need to put the necro in here. I need to put the skellies in here. And I need to put the guards in here. And I need to put the. No. Skellies and guards go at the same time. And so, then... Christy. Okay. So. Roll for the necro. Necro gets that. Skellies. I also sent you a message in Discord. Okie doc. If it's I hate you, then I can't do anything about that, I'm sorry. No, see, that's see, not the message. You know what I fucking hate? Chris right, 25 to 20, Quaglob got 20. 20 to I 15. I got 21. Oh wait, sorry, oh, got I got 21. 23, Chris. Oh, you got 23. Okay, Elzin got 23. My data I got what the fuck, guys? Got 21. <laughs> Have you rolled for Arachne as well? Yeah, I did roll for Arachne. Okay. Alright, what's the message you sent me? So, um, I fucking told them to be ready. Oh, okay. we weren't ready for this. How do we expect them to be ready for this? All right, so, uh, city? twenty to fifteen at all. Also, will you can roll uh, initiative as well? Arachne got fourteen. So just roll that and add your initiative modifier. Oh boy, he got high initiative as well. You can unmute yourself if you want to at this point, because you'll be coming in in a moment. Oh, we are in such bad... Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Don't oh, worry, no. I got call lightning. Cuts. Initiative, initiative. Uh, what it is should be initiative? It should be next to your AC, which is purple, on the core oh, face. Oh, oh, my initiative is 1, so that's okay. 20. So that's 20, nice. <laughs> Alright, 15 to t 15, 20 to 15, anyone? 15 to 10? I reckon I got 14. 14 on Arachne. Oh, I need to roll for Chronicle. Chronicle has yes. got... Oh shit, Chronicle's here! Yay. I forgot he existed. Hold on. I'm also gonna... Um, no, we've got Will. Yeah, that's his, that's his power at work. Yeah. yeah. He's not here! Yes, I yeah. know. Okay, I it's not our fault if we forget about him. Because we're yeah. supposed to. We're supposed to forget about him. Yeah, where is... It's, it's, it's canon that we're supposed to forget him. So... Yeah, exactly. He can be the, he can be the generic human guard. There you go. <laughs> he's not even a human, he's just a generic human guard for all intents and purposes. He's Nazima, isn't he? Yeah, he's Nazima. Yes? Yeah, he is Nazima. So, uh, uh, 10 to 5 at all? Is 8. Sasha? Uh, 9. 9. Okay. Oh, don't put the extra zero in, on that. 90! <laughs> <laughs> okay. If I get 90, fucking do flash. I, like running if around. I get 90, do I get like 12 uh, bonus no. rounds? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so what of the initiative is very interesting actually. Mm. Yes, it is. Yeah, but Hold is gonna die first. I don't know what you mean. In actual fact, they haven't actually noticed you yet. So there's no way they're going to attack you on their turn unless you provoke them. <coughs> and have a turn to prepare. Actually, uh, 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 <coughs> You've already yeah. provoked them with your stuff, like activating it, however. Um, however, the individual who would notice is currently facing the other way. The Azamara is on the top, is currently focusing and controlling something. Elzion, at this point, you've noticed that around the city, four pillars, or four red pillars, have uh, emerged. Oh. This feels like hematurgy or something, right? Um, no. Go for the way, the, the this red. is not hematurgy. Okay, so... Can we do, like, a check to see if I recognize any of this? Because religion power. Sure. Religion power. Yo, Religion. this is one of your. If you don't get a twenty, you're fucked. It on. No. I'm <laughs> fucked. Whatever this is, this entity is powerful. You don't know to what extent. 
Um, as this all happens, you're all standing there. You're watching the creed is the crowd is screaming and moving away. Chronicle has drawn his weapons. A lot of the guards are fighting, which is means you're mingling in. Not as well, but enough. His passive out of trace is still up. It's at this point you watch as this skeleton gets obliterated. As you see the door get as you see the door to the tavern get kicked open, and an angry half orc with a giant vial over his shoulder walks through. Sorry, a giant what over his shoulder? <laughs> a, a vial, a vial, a, a judge, a large violin if you want to image it. How y'all doing tonight? <laughs> Honestly, not fantastic. Let's kill some undead. Hello, friend. Let's read my mind, Sasha. Kill them all. Kill them all. So this is looking like prime we're gonna be inspiration for my or... next album cover. <laughs> oh my god, I am. Um, I, I I I've I've seen this character before in another campaign, but I never thought I'd see it in one of Chris's. I don't it's know what character Rockstar. that is. Now. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, you will see. In terms of what you see, you see a half orc with a deep V neck in a little bit of a. Going on with a little bit of light blue and red at this time. Uh, this time, so is it a half orc or a full orc? A half orc. You've got human features, but you can see that there are gemstones encrusted all along the trim, going down the uh, the deep V neck, <laughs> leading down to some abs, which you can clearly see. The giant veal seems to be made of what looks to be hardened stone and iron, with what looks to be very thin white uh, threads running along it. You see a bow currently strapped uh, strapped to the side, the instrument or the Thing you would use to play the uh, the vial. You can see that the individual has a spear on their uh, a spear on their back, and they have what looks to be metal rings around each of their tusks, as well as a series of uh, kind of designer piercings uh, along their right ear as they as they stand there and look out amongst the rest of them. Uh, this skeleton uh, turns its attention and now is aware. Uh, the individual on stage doesn't seem to notice or care at the moment that you're about. So, how long can you guys go on till about like eleven-ish, or do we want to stop there? I think that's a pretty good stopping point for um, introductions. Yeah, yeah. stopping point because we yeah. can. Let's face it. Like as of this week, I can start going on longer, but um, like, that's a, a that's a reason to come back. <laughs> if anything else, rather than a yeah. battle half finished. Yeah, he kicked. Kicks open oh, yeah. the door, half orc walks out. This says, this, this fight does look like it might drag on. You forgot to mention the orcish war paint, but styled in a way that looks like elegant makeup. Yes, that is also true. Oh, you beautiful half orc! <laughs> Wait, so, long flowing dreads. Yep. Oh. This is the most beautiful half orc you've ever seen. Elson will refuse to accept the fact that he actually kind of likes your character's look. <laughs> Wait, so, wait, no, no. Uh, okay, I already sent one image, but I found the perfect image for our, our new, our, our new half orc friend. All the same, I will call it there there we go. for tonight. I think. Yes. Okay. You might, you might want to show this one to stream. No. <laughs> oh, it's not. Quite like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So. Am I wrong? As, as the. As the announcement seems to have gone wrong, Algar, Regan, and the governor, and maybe some others, are seemingly gone missing at this time of need. Skeletons riddle the streets. You can see guards <laughs> fighting them, automatons at work, fighting what they can, and you can see the geists standing next to the necromancer on stage, watching over the crowd, seemingly unreacting, as the individual who's flying seems to be focusing on something. That is where we will end our session. The introduction of a, with the introduction of a new player, Gact. So, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and see you next Sunday for some more D and D. Bye bye. 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 bye.